Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. I was driving in today, and I told Freeze Pops that I... Oh, I didn't tell him. I told myself I was going to tell Freeze Pops that I wanted the original Will Smith Summertime, but I want the Summertime sample, because I heard DJ Wonder doing it this morning on my ride in, and it put me in a great mood, and it was so weird, and this is going to sound kind of jerky. Shocker, right? For Solo Show at ESPN Radio. <laughs> but question to you, Will Kane co-hosting with me today. Is it wrong for me to wish the song Summertime wasn't Will Smith? Like, if somebody else did it, would it be better? Should it be remade? Do you care? Uh, no, I care. I only care because I like to learn about you. It's inside into you. You're above Will Smith, but you're not above this song. And that's what you're trying to I don't reconcile. Even wanna, I don't want to be a hater. You know, like, as I've, I've said this a few times, I think in the last year, I'm just kind of tired of, like, all the consumption of this guy's the worst, this one's terrible, what are you doing? You're I don't want to be a hater with a lot of stuff, but like Will Smith isn't isn't my favorite, but he's out there living his life. He's doing his thing. Yeah, his kids post every now and then can freak me out, but you know what? Maybe he's having fun with all of us too. So like I don't want to beat up on a young kid either, but I like that sample so much and the original sample is so good that I kind of want it to be done by somebody I really, really like. Here's what I think. Okay. I think you shouldn't worry about it. I think you, you. should be a trendsetter. And I think if you, 42-year-old, 41? 41. 41. A little time. Year old Ryan Rossillo, roll around in your ride with the wind is down, pumping. I'm not talking about listening to. I'm talking about pumping Will Smith summertime. You are way cooler than if you were riding around playing Meek Mill or Migos or future how dangerous how nervous are you you just said three rappers in a row and you think you got it right and you're kind of looking at me going am i going to get one of these wrongs hey look i was listening to dom kennedy last night I went to get an ice cream cone there's a place near my place uh it's like open 11 o'clock at night walked in a little rough got cut by seven people i just kept it moving hat down tank on got back in dom kennedy out of the parking lot all right the Rosillo show Presented by Progressive Insurance. It's time right now for Straight Talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Again, Will Kane with us. Carrie Champion presented at the BET Awards last night. You may have seen a tweet or two on the BET Awards. I understood less than 5% of them. Carrie Champion is going to come on and talk to us about it. Uh, 2.45 Eastern. I can't wait. Really excited. I have a question for you, though. Yes, sir. So with all the NBA stuff that's happening, and it's going to keep happening because we're right in the middle of this awesome soap opera of the NBA offseason. Last night we had heard, and we told you on the show, the Cavs were looking for a third team, younger pieces to flip that to the Pacers so that they could get Paul George on Cleveland. And then Denver was the reported piece last night, Mark Stein, Chris Haynes. Okay, Before we worry about any of that stuff, because I'm not sure that any of it's imminent, it's just that we know that a lot, and you've even pointed this out, a lot of the offseason is about LeBron, and LeBron personally is trying to find a way to gear up as much as he possibly can. Right. I believe LeBron is the most powerful athlete in team sports I've ever seen and going right now. Is is that something you would agree with? Sold. Bought. I'm in. That's unassailably true. So we're also looking at what can the Cavs do this offseason to prepare themselves for this upcoming year because if it isn't good, if they don't get the pieces LeBron wants, and it's still very challenging to get these kind of players when you're kind of just moving contracts around, or Kevin Love, who I think is now becoming underrated, but if it's ugly in 2018, then LeBron opts out and he can move on. You think that would be as bad as him leaving seven years ago for Miami? Do, do I think if LeBron bails next year, yes. it's as bad as seven years ago? Yes. I do not. You do not. Okay. I do not. I thought we talked about this, but it you just... No, no, real, really quickly, I'm not going to to, to uh, derail us here. I think you can only cheat on your spouse once. I mean, if were, they bring were you... Were you shocked? <laughs> you bring, <laughs> they bring you back. It's on them at that point. I mean, if LeBron leaves again, it's on Cleveland. Okay, all right. So he's done the damage. So we're in agreement, most powerful. Then we do agree that if you've already had this happen to in your Cleveland, like you can still be upset if LeBron leaves in 2018, but it's already kind of happened. You've come back. You've won a ring. But I think we're we're collectively, even if people aren't going to like his next move, like there's not going to be a bunch of people going, yay, he went to the Lakers. I love this guy. He's awesome. It's just not the way we operate. But we're going to be a little more numb to it because we've already seen it happen not only with LeBron but with Durant. What if I told you somebody in the NFL who is LeBron's contemporary, it's Tom Brady. Like These guys are not just 
really good. We're talking about perhaps positioning themselves to be the best that have ever done it in their sport. Brady is going to be 40 in August. He'll have made about $200 million career earnings. He could leave after next year. What if Brady said, you know what I want to do? I want to choose my ending. I want to run this thing the way a LeBron runs it. Because we don't have anyone in the NFL that even shows a glimpse of having that kind of individual power that LeBron has. What if Brady said, I want to play for the Niners, lifelong dream, childhood team. I want to resurrect him. I want that to be my final chapter. How would that be consumed? Would it be good for him? Would it be how dare you? Like I think it's just really interesting to think in one sport, we're becoming more accepting of it in the NBA, but we don't like it. Where in the NFL, we never even think of it as an option. I think it'd go over like a lead balloon. I think it'd be a fart in church. It would not work whatsoever, even to the, well, I was going to say universally praised, but Tom Brady's very divisive, right? Very. Isn't that right? Um, I, I think the anti-Brady stuff at this point is just you, you're a Jets fan and you hate him and you're going to Flategate and Spygate and you just don't want to. You're trying to find ways to make yourself feel better about your team. I'd like to see an approval poll on Tom Brady. I bet his negatives are pretty high. Not that they should be. I'm not arguing for should. I'm just saying is. Okay, I, but it, it's not It's not who he is as a player. If you're just going about it and right. saying, okay, I just have a hard time believing that there's still a guy at Buffalo Wild Wings is sitting there being like, I don't know, dude, system QB. Like, I know there's going to be somebody. I'm not talking that, I'm not saying there's zero people that say it, but I just, I don't think it's a lot of people that have a ton of friends. There, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, all that being said, I agree with you, Brady's position in football. I think Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. I actually think Tom Brady's the greatest football player of all time. I think Tom Brady's respect ratio to hate ratio is heavy on the respect side. And if he tried to pull a LeBron James move and said, I want to play in San Francisco, boyhood team 49ers that's my dream i think it would be crushed in the media i think he would be seen as a prima donna i think he would be seen as who do you think you are trying to engineer yeah, the football outcomes is about team yeah i think it would go over horribly i think lebron gets this path not all paths but this path much more made available to him than than tom brady ever would that's kind of interesting you don't think so you think? What do you think? There's a million different ways I could look at this. Where the first thing is, is if you're in the car, you're going, well, why would Brady ever want to leave? LeBron wanted to leave because he didn't believe in Cleveland, didn't believe in their management. And the sports are really different because you just have to link up with one of those other two, you know, top 10 players, top 20 players. But we're setting, yeah, and we're setting but, the why aside. Just but, like so Brady wants to, period. So. Yeah, just Brady. The counter to it would be Brady would never want to leave New England. New England's never been confused with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. So it's why just, would he want to leave? All right, so we're setting aside the why. Yeah, that's not a counter. That's an excuse out of the debate. You I'm, know no, I mean? I'm just trying You're to think of like <laughs> yeah. all of all of the things I need to deflect. Like, all right, go ahead and hit me with the 10 unnecessary things, <laughs> and let's get down to the core of this. If Brady said, I'm out, would it be... Well, how, how would he be treated? It couldn't be anything as bad as it was seven years ago for LeBron, right? You're saying it would be bad, but just... People were really upset. Like their world, like things that they believed. It's like finding out wrestling's fake. You know? <laughs> when LeBron left for Miami the first time, or, this isn't even real anymore. Well, maybe and I'm only, like, yeah. So maybe I'm only analyzing this in a post LeBron world, like the world that's existed for the past seven years, where a player in the NBA can do that. I mean, Kevin Durant got a lot of heat, clearly. And LeBron, should he do it again, will get some heat. But I do think if Tom Brady tried to pull this off, even at the age of 39, it would not be received well at all. I think we allow individualism in basketball to such a greater extent than we do in football that it would be it's almost beyond the realm of consideration. I want to do a little bit more on this, perhaps, but there's also something that you said today about what? A LeBron team of oh. him, Paul George, Dwayne Wade, and... Chris Paul? No, Carmelo. Uh, so Melo, Wade, George, LeBron, all team up. Yes. In the next few weeks. Which I know it's video game. I know it's like fantasy draft. But Brian Winthorst reports that if Carmelo Anthony and Dwayne Wade are bought out, there will be interest in Cleveland, mutual interest. In and Cleveland. your answer bummed everybody out. So we'll do your answer on what that team would be with 
Will Kane, Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. The Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Compare rates for you so you get the best deal, even if it's not with us. Saving you time and money. Now that's Progressive. Call or click today. Brian Windhorst will try to help us sort out all the moving pieces and what could be the Cavs trying to find a way to add Paul George. Will Kane uh, all day today. And then we're going to do a BET wrap with Kerry Champion uh, next hour. Are you ready for that? I mean... 100% not. No. Can we prep him? Let's prep him at the end of this hour. Prep Will Kane for a BET interview. I missed it. I was prepping for first take, watching Chapo on Netflix, doing both. New new series on Netflix. Well, that's the new one, right? That's yeah. the guy that's the, uh, is he a Mexican drug lord? You don't know El Chapo? Yeah, I do, but is it Mexican drug lord? Yes. Right, just yes. I want to double check. I don't want to offend anybody by not getting it right. It's good. Is it better than Narcos? You have to kind of quick quick review. Um, it's produced by Univision and Netflix, so it's in Spanish. So you have to deal with the dubbing. It's got English language dubbing. Ah, and that's a little bit of a hurdle, right? But if you can get over that, now, I I love uh, Mexican drug cartel stuff. Love, love. I'm also an expert in that. <laughs> Wait a minute! I had this whole time I've been working with you. I had no idea that I was sitting next to a Mexican cartel expert yeah you want to talk about the zetas the sinaloa cartel we can talk about that you guys should have that in the post show pod (laughs) in other words next (laughs) so brian windhorst is trying to sort through the three-teamer uh mark stein chris haynes had it over the weekend and that is can the Cavs find a way to get paul george and the stuff that was reported on dot com from stein and those guys was just that it was george coming to the Cavs. love would actually go to the nuggets the nuggets would send a bunch of pieces over to the pacers because the pacers don't want love they want young guys. They want draft picks. I still wasn't quite sure what the Denver pieces would be in all this. So Windhorse is trying to figure out why, or help us figure out why this is where it's at now. The best thing they have to offer is Kevin Love. But the issue there is that the Pacers aren't looking for big men. They have Miles Turner as their center. They believe he's a franchise player of the future now. And last week they just drafted T.J. Leaf, who's a power forward. So even if they really wanted Kevin Love, it doesn't fit with the, where they're going with their roster. So as a result, you've got to get a third team involved. And anybody who's been around the NBA for any length of time will tell you a three-team trade is a no-team trade. Obviously they happen, but they failed nine. 99% of the time, and that's why this is a challenge for the Cavs to get done. I also don't think there's anyone in the East, like Boston has picks, they have things the Pacers would want. Why would Boston, who also wants Paul George, and there are reports saying that they think that they could get him on an extension in a trade, which I'm not sure I even believe, but why would the Celtics want to help him? Okay, Why would the Celtics want to help Cleveland down the road? It just doesn't make any sense. Would Denver, if you're moving younger pieces like a Gary Harris, is Jamal Murray somebody they wouldn't move and then add Kevin Love to what they have out there? Okay, maybe, but it's still going to be something the Pacers feel really enticed about. And then it comes down to like, wait a minute, are we doing something we like or are we just helping the Cavs get Paul George? Mm-hmm. But there was another story that you guys were doing on first take that was even bigger than this. It was just kind of a make-believe thing, right? Well, I know this is from Brian Windhorst, and he's saying... Uh, and apparently said on ESPN Radio on Thursday night that if both Carmelo Anthony and Dwayne Wade are bought out by the Knicks and Bulls respectively, um, when this summer, this summer, then then the okay. Cavaliers are a likely landing spot for both of them. Um, and that you know, let's for the moment set aside the um, the probability of that coming true. I think you and I can both realize the probability on that. Low. Um, <laughs> That's why I said it was kind of make believe. But I do though, think like, it illustrates something, Ryan. Okay. Okay. Even if we we take this 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 um, low probability assumption that Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony sign for veterans minimums with Cleveland in the off season, and they pull off this Paul George trade, would a team of Kyrie, Paul George, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony beat the Warriors? And I think the answer is clearly no. I don't think that all-star team from 2007. <laughs> Not um, entirely fair, but <laughs> um, you say 2011? Maybe, maybe 11, 2011. And then Paul George gets in the conversation. Um, I don't think that that team beats the Warriors. I don't, I don't, I don't think it comes. I don't even think it's all that close. Eh, close might have been pushing it. See, that's where you didn't need to do it. You didn't right. need to do it. That good, group, I was good till that. That group doesn't beat the Warriors. And how was that received? Poorly. What? Man, I think fans. Was it just the noises that you heard? Do you think it was an overwhelming response that you're wrong? Uh, like people think you're wrong for not thinking that group 
could beat the Warriors. Well, I mean, who knows how accurate social media is of what's going Still on. Still haven't gotten that locked down yet. No. Have we? We haven't. Have I not, or has the world not? No, I just saw I just saw an app today for a new tape measure. It was yeah. unbelievable. The graphics, the demo, where it's basically you take your phone, and then you go from like one end to the other end, start, stop, and then it runs how long the tape measure. Yeah. And the actual graphic is the tape measure, and they did the demo next to a real live tape measure. Yeah. You know, pulled all the way out. Stanley deal. Love like, it. Look I at want that app. Yellow te- tape, 46 inches. Now we're at 48. We got quarter inches. We got eighth. We got 16th. This is great. Then some contractor reply goes, would never use this on a job site. <laughs> and you go well sorry i guess we'll i guess we'll go bankrupt then <laughs> so anyway that's a lot like the response to your thing uh, i think the twitter response the social media response is that i'm a moron but that's par for the course i agree with you by the way man i mean i we all want to be all-star team creators fantasy football managers <laughs> you know it's just it's not a team it's not a team. It's a bunch of 30-year-olds who are used to being the man playing iso ball, learning how to play a new game, a game that the Warriors play better. I don't see it happening. I don't know why it would be that weird for you to say that. Like At this point, it's a lot of names. I mean, that's really, that's all really is. exciting. But my sense in talking to you, that whole mellow to the Cavs thing, this current trade deadline, so we're going back to February of 2017 here, that was Mello. Mello wanted out of New York, and he wanted to go to Cleveland. And Cleveland's like, we'd have interest, but we're not giving you anything good. <laughs> we're not giving you Kevin Love. And why did the Knicks buy him out, by the way? You buy the Knicks buying out Carmelo? It's so much money. So just to have nobody just, there. And I don't look, this is also something else. And this is maybe, look, I don't know Mello. I don't know Lala. Shocker. But. He may not want to leave New York because of his his deal with her, right? Like they're not together right now and some stuff went down and then he's he's commenting on her Instagram. Maybe they're just in the friend zone. I don't know. And he's just being a good friend. He's commenting on Instagram. But sometimes when guys run afoul with the old lady friend, the last thing they want to do is leave that town, and especially when that town's New York City. Like, let me just stay in the mix. Let me just be an option. Oh, you're saying single so, life in New York. Well, he's thinking, I don't want... My wife here to, you know, like if I at least stick around and I want, I don't know if he wants her back or not. I can't believe I'm on Mello's love life. I can't believe it. You got there on your own, by the way. I know. (laughs) I know I did. But look, I'll, I'll admit, like when, when Bobby Petrino ran into his his stuff, we talked to somebody that was close with him. I'm like, why is he staying in the state of Arkansas? Like, get out of town. He's like headed out to the Pacific Northwest, get a cabin, learn how to trout fish, like take a knee for about a year. And, Somebody that was close to him was like, no, he wants to stick around. He wants to make this thing work out with the family. So sometimes that's the that goes against him being bought out and wanting to go to Cleveland, but maybe that's another reason why he wants to stay in New York. All just rapid speculation right there. But right? you're with me. Despite the quality of the names the and who they've been part, in their career. Yeah, the important part of this conversation. <laughs> yeah, but back to that part. You don't see that beating the Warriors either. I know, no. I know you guys got sidetracked with Lala there for a minute, but... I just I look at Smallman as this oasis in a desert every now and then. Does the Lala theory make sense to you at all? Are you on top of that story at all? I think it makes sense. You're not on top of that story, though. No, I am. I, I think that he would want to stay there and try and work it out. We need somebody from like People Magazine to be on a hotline for us. No? No, that's a good idea. Right. Just bat phone it to her. Hey, how's this gossip going? Yeah, who can we get? Because I, I, I go to you for other stuff. Smallman, but I think we need somebody who's like just anytime it's any of this pop culture, non mainstream sports stuff for for Will and I. Paris Hilton, Perez Hilton, mm. he's kind of had his day, right? I don't think he's going to want to come on this show. Be great because I want a retainer. I want to be whenever it gets down this road. Who can we call immediately to sort us through all this stuff? Like a Lala Mellow Insider. Yeah, right. Are they trying to get back together? Does he miss her? I don't know any of these things. I'm just trying to figure out free agency, man. Based on his social media, I think he misses her. His activities. Lots of liking and commenting. Right. He's liking and commenting. Who do you get mad at? Chris Rock? Didn't that happen? We're lost. We should get out. Pull the shoot. Anyway, Warriors win. Pull the shoot. Okay, the Russell Show reminding you that you can listen to all three hours of the show on your phone on your ESPN app or Apple Podcast. The man that uh, is on top of the story, Brian Windhorst, will help us sort through it. Probably not the la-la part of it. Next on ESPN Radio. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh... Well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. 
and see when they call Geico,、uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15 percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Brian Windhorst is with us, working on the trade machine here on ESPN.com, sorting through the rumors with the Cavs' pursuit of Paul George. Joining us now with Will Kane here again, Brian Windhorst on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com/gold. Brian, when you saw this report on ESPN.com again, it's Chris Haynes and Mark Stein. We know the Cavs want Paul George. We know they're looking for a third team. How close do you think this actually is to happening this off season? It was a good idea by the teams last week because Denver not only is dying to get a star player, but was willing to trade its first round draft pick. I know this because Denver did trade its first round draft pick to Utah in a separate trade that they did anyway,、um, and. The problem here, at least for the Cavs' pursuit of Paul George, is that they're they're not natural trade partners with Indiana. So you have to bring in a third team. Denver was a good option because Denver isn't really in the game for Paul George. Although maybe they was one of the reasons why they didn't work because they was like, listen, well, you know, maybe we can talk to Indiana directly. But also because they were they have extra、uh, extra abundance of young players and they're willing to move their draft pick. It's very hard for the Cavs. To legitimately execute a trade for for Paul George using Kevin Love because they're going to have to use his third team and and teams that are competing to get Paul George or competing to get or compete against them in the Eastern Conference are not going to help them do it. It's hard to compete、uh, to complete a three team trade if you've got twenty eight other teams to choose from. It's really hard when you got to cross some off the list. So、uh, this made sense from a conceptual standpoint, and they definitely talked, but I don't know how close it was ever to actually、uh, happening. What do you think the Pacers want the most? Then、uh, they they obviously don't want to go in this season, but I didn't have a problem with them not trading him on draft night if they didn't like what they were getting back. So of all the rumored pieces and young guy from Denver, a future for like, what do you think they would most want to be able to pull off before they get rid of George? This is exactly to me like the Kevin Love situation three years ago.、Uh, he was on the last year of his contract. He informed the Timberwolves he was not going to resign, and they traded him. And they got in that case the number one overall pick and、uh, a future a draft pick,、uh, your first round pick, which they later traded,、um, and then、uh, Anthony Bennett, who was basically used to balance out the trade. So、uh, the Pacers would probably like、uh, a first round pick and a high quality young player. Now the difference between Kevin Love and Paul George is Kevin Love was willing to sit down with the team he was being traded to and give some assurance that he wanted to be there long term. And so I don't think Paul George. Is willing to do that, but that's the standard that the Pacers can certainly ask for is a is a draft pick and and a prospect.、Um, but but meeting that and also executing the trade rules is easier said than done. Brian, who on the Nuggets or which players on the Nuggets, multiple players, was it that interested or could have interested the interested the Pacers? Well, I don't know exactly what the trade offer was, but I know if I was Indiana, what I would be asking for, I would have asked. For the number thirteen pick, which was a lottery pick, and I would have tried to get Gary Harris. Gary Harris is one of the more underrated、uh, wing players in the league right now.、Uh, would be a terrific get for them.、Uh, would be would leave a hole for Denver, but Denver would be getting Kevin Love. And it was also reported that Kenneth Fareed would possibly be going to Cleveland. The, the Nuggets have been trying to get rid of Kenneth Fareed in his contract for a year and a half now. So maybe part of the freight to agree to that type of deal would be to send、uh, Fareed to Cleveland, but. Conceptual doesn't matter because it didn't happen. Is there any indication that Paul George? Where where do we currently stand with Paul George's willingness to sign an extension? He's made all the noise about wanting to be in LA a year from now. Is any team that trade for him? Do that, does that team have any hope of signing Paul George to an extension? Well, of course, because things change in the NBA on a, on an hourly basis. The concept that anybody in the world. Knows what the lay of the land is going to be in next June. I can tell you that nobody knows what the lay of the land is going to be in at 5 p.m. That's just the way it is in the NBA. So certainly, if you trade it for Paul George, just because he says he doesn't extend with you doesn't mean he won't. He's not writing it in blood.、Uh, but that said,、uh, it certainly doesn't 
if he doesn't uh, make you want to offer a heck of a lot for him, and it reduces the position that the that the Pacers have in trade talks. And frankly, with if you look at what the, the the Timberwolves got for Jimmy Butler, which was two young players and a top ten pick. Um, they couldn't even get that for Paul George because uh, Butler has two years left on his contract and isn't announcing to the world he wants to sign with the Lakers. That kind of put, uh, uh, you know, you know, sort of put a standard on these types of trade talks. It's just, it's very hard. The thing I would say to the Pacers, and the Pacers know this, is that in free agency, things change so fast in the league that potentially uh, opportunities could create that don't exist today. Um, a player movement could happen or a defection could happen. And all of a sudden, a team that wasn't interested in making a certain offer for George could change in a week. And that's why I think the Pacers, uh, you know, have to practice some patience here. Their best offer may not have come yet. Brian Windhorst, The Rosillo Show. It's ESPN Radio. One other thought here, and I know Will had talked about it on first take. We did it earlier on our show here. The theory being if Wade and Mello got to a buyout situation, that they would join up and all this kind of new super team stuff with Cleveland. Is this still just something these guys hope to do before they retire? Is this something they think can actually help them compete with Golden State? Hmm. I mean, getting Dwayne Wade would certainly help the Cavs, and I think that's a more realistic buyout situation short term than Carmelo. But it doesn't help them defend Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson. Uh, Dwayne is a is a better defender than Carmelo is, but at this stage of his career, he's not the type of athlete that the Cavs would need. The Cavs need um, some more defensive athletes. But if you can get a star player like Dwayne Wade for free on the market because the Bulls are paying his money, you certainly are looking to do that. And realistically, if Dwayne gets bought out by the Cavs or bought out by the Bulls, there's only a couple of teams he would seriously consider, and I think Cleveland would have a chance to be on the list. Thanks, man. Thanks, sir. Thanks, guys. All right. Brian Windhorst, the latest there. I thought you were going to ask him about Lala. I'm not. We're efforting Peter Rosenberg third hour. So we're going to try. If you were making a list of people that might know about Lala and Carmelo, I think Wendy is pretty high. I mean, it's pretty plugged in there. You want to call him back? Want to call him back? Ask, hey, yeah, Smallman, will you call up Windhorse and go, Rosilla forgot to ask you about wait, wait. Lala's Instagram page. Don't baby. tell him. Just call him back and say, the guys have one more question for you. <laughs> and let's just see. I don't really care about the answer. On a scale from 1 to 10, how irritated will he be? <laughs> 